Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Design Underground, episode 19. I'm Rob, Design Paladin of Serving. And, and, and I'm Tyler Pixley. <laughs> and I, I'm not cutting you off, really, I swear. We're here to talk about a little bit in depth how games are made. That's what Design Underground is all about. So today we're going to talk about something rather um, technical again. Uh, we, we had a, a little uh, discussion last week about our frame rate. Yes. And uh, there were some, some places where we felt like maybe our servers were running a little bit high end on the, uh, on the usage. So we sent Mr. Pixley deep, deep into the code and the profiling tools to look at our problem and see what might be causing it. So what did you find in those terrifying recesses of the code? Uh, well, that depends. You want to hear about CPU or GPU? Because I found yes. both. Okay. Let's start with CPU. Tell All me right. about CPU. Alrighty. So we were experiencing a tremendously high amount of usage on the server side of things, where the server would be taking up 65% uh, of an entire core. And with the early stages and how few people we have in our game, it really should never be that high. It was even doing that with no one in the Yeah, middle, it was right? at 65% with no one in it. When it had people in it, such as recent play tests, it would be at 100% and bring the experience to a screeching halt for everybody. For our less technical viewers, it's chugging. Yes, chugging. <laughs> uh, so I went in to see what was causing the chugging, where the bottlenecks in the uh, game logic were. So are there built-in tools you can use to look at this? Or? Yeah. Yes, so Unreal Engine provides a uh, fairly extensive profiler tool called the Unreal Front End. It's a terrible name for a good tool. Um, <laughs> Basically, what it does is you record um, a segment of gameplay, not like video recording, but recording the stats and um, the execution of a particular segment of gameplay. You take that, open the UE4 stats file in Unreal Front End, and then it gives you frame by frame analysis of what was going on in the game thread, the render thread, and the other ancillary threads that Unreal runs. That sounds scintillating. Oh, it's, oh, it's absolutely dull. Scintillating. It was, it was probably one of the most boring things I did this week. So what did you find? What was, what was the biggest culprit? So the biggest culprit was a function called um, update geom mot multiple, which up, it would be geom as in geometry, but that, that's not really telling of anything. Basically, that function was being called by other functions which were related to updating the collision volumes for animated objects. Now, there are two things in Descent right now that animate. Ships and doors. So if it, this stuff is chugging with no <laughs> ship in it, then it must be the doors. Good guess. Yes. By process of elimination, the one thing that it could be was the thing. Yes. So, uh, so of course, I asked myself, why is it taking so long for the doors to recompute their collision volumes? And also, why are they recomputing their collision volumes when their animations aren't running? The animations aren't running. That means they're still, which means there's nothing to update. So why would they be doing that? That is a great question. I still don't know. But I did oh. find the answer to the first question. And that was because <laughs> the collision volumes for the doors were actually very complex. We had basically form-fitted them to the door. To the pedals on the iris door. Yeah, and also to the ring because uh, collision volumes have to be convex. Like, they can't go they can't go inward. So like this is a concave surface. It can't do that. It has to be completely enclosed. Um, so, and there were a ton of these, like it was a multi-convex hole, which is a very technical term for a lot of boxes, more boxes than were necessary. A whole lot of curvy boxes. Uh, not really curvy at all. Actually, they were straight lines. So not really convex. I mean, no, I they, they are, are convex. convex. <laughs> uh, if they were curvy, then they'd probably be concave. Um, but there were a ton of these. So um, 
and there was a convex hole around each of the leaves of the door, and those were very form-fitted and needlessly complex. So I took it down from uh, an inordinate amount of different uh, convex collision volumes to 13 boxes per door. 13. 13. That's a good number. And so was the door colliding with itself? No. That's good. No. It, that would be awful if it collided with itself. It does not do that. But uh, as soon as that happened, we went from 65% idle to 21% idle on the server with that one change. That's a big improvement. Quite. So um, we haven't done another stress test since then because that happened yesterday. So we have yet to see if we set up another advisory board play session. We get a bunch of people in the server. We can test again, see how well it holds up th this next time around. Well, it'll be a big improvement. Quite. So you've also been looking at graphic settings that we can change to improve performance on individual machines. What kind of things have you been looking at there? Um, so, uh, what I was actually looking at was more mm. things that would be bad for everybody. Like, there are already individual graphic settings because, which you can set through the console, and I'll actually be taking that functionality to build a graphics configuration menu later on. But the thing was, we, uh, I was doing more profiling because our low-end machine here at the office, which uh, runs a, an NVIDIA GTX 750, so mid-range as so far as cards go, but low-range for proper gaming, um, it was chugging really hard. So I'm like, well, I can use the profiling tool on this. So I did, and I found out the, that the automated occlusion calling um, function. It's a lot of big words. Yeah, I, I was going to explain those. That was taking <laughs> a lot of time. Like, it was taking 30 milliseconds, which... Um, That's an eternity in game That, types. exactly. You, like, for 60 FPS game, uh, gaming, you want your entire frame to be done in 16 milliseconds. This was taking 30. That's not going to work out so well for high frame rate. Correct. And that was just that one thing. That was 75%, so there was other stuff on top of that that was doing stuff. So... So, occlusion calling, uh, for those of you that don't know, is when the engine decides which um, models and polygons and which graphic stuff are being hidden by other stuff because they're behind them, so they're occluded. Like, my face is currently occluded by my hand. So, um, a good uh, rendering engine would just not render my eyes because you can't see them. Um, but this was taking an inordinate, inordinate amount of time, which I, of course, found very strange because the Titan X on my proper dev machine was blasting through it. Turns out a lot of problems can be solved by having a Titan X blast through it. But point is, so like, wait, why would occlusion calling be taking that long, especially since we're in such tight enclosed tunnels? It should be relatively easy to do occlusion calling. So... I went into the editor, and the editor has a bunch of visualization modes. It doesn't, it doesn't only give you the option to like look at the level as you would see it, like when it's lit or when it's not lit, so you can see like the flat colors of stuff, or, or wireframe. Like it gives you a bunch of options, and one of those options is visibility collision. Uh, basically, saying when uh, we do um, a check along a line. In the visibility channel, uh, technical term there, more difficult to explain. Basically, what allows you to check whether or not you can see something, most of the walls, in fact, a lot of the models in the level, were transparent in that view mode. Which means I could be in the main room and see a start room way off in the distance, and that would be visible to me despite the fact there's a wall in the way. Hmm. So... And what led me to the solution is that, like, wow, this is the walls. What is the most special feature about the walls? It turns out that would be tessellation. Uh, tessellation is another complicated graphics term. Basically, um, it's a method by which better model detail um, is generated as you get closer to an object. So, like, you have a, a, fairly, a fairly high poly car, for instance. Car games love this effect. 
you have fairly high poly at a distance, but as you get closer, it creates, it dynamically generates more and more polygons to smooth it out. So you can like look <laughs> right across the hood of a car and it's just silky smooth across as opposed to like you can see like these little jaggies. See the little triangles that make it up. Or yeah, so in wireframe mode, it's actually really cool to look at. Um, but this was on our walls. And the thing is, you never really get that close to the walls um, because you're in 10 meter wide ships. Um, so the effect wasn't, isn't all that um, apparent anyway. And on a, on a hunch, I decided like, what if I turn tessellation off on the master material for the walls? So despite the fact that we have a bunch of different uh, materials for the walls that all have slightly different colors, slightly different textures, we have a master one that they all inherit from. So I turn off tessellation in that, which turned it off for all the rest, and suddenly, in the uh, visibility collision mode, they all stood up, it was opaque, and suddenly it wasn't doing that hefty calculation. So then I did a build, put it onto our low-end machine, ran it, and it boosted the frame rate, uh, basically doubled the frame rate. So how, what kind of improvement do we have as far as the 30 millisecond frame render time to, uh, what did it improve to? Uh, so, 30 milliseconds total, well actually it ended up being 40 milliseconds total in that scene. But 30 of it was the culling. Uh, so, so we went from a 40 millisecond frame rate, which is about 24-ish thereabouts. I'm doing some quick mental estimation here, so don't quote me on that number. Um, so pretty low, you know, you really don't want to go below 30. It went from that um, on everything else being on the absolute lowest setting I could get it to about 70, again, on all the lowest settings. But that did mean that um, other graphic settings could then be turned back on to make things look nice. Like I could turn dynamic lighting back on and it wouldn't completely annihilate the frame rate. So this was a huge boost for lower end systems. And for, for Titan Xs and 980 Titaniums and 390 Xs, it just means they'll heat up that list that little less. Plus, it's good for the people who are using VR because a nice yes. smooth frame rate is very good for Absolutely. VR. Absolutely. Um, like, if I turn off a couple things, I think Dynamic Shadows is probably the biggest one, I can now get a rock solid 75 frames per second. Right in where we want to be for that VR stuff. For DK2, we want to get to 90 for the consumer version. Yes. We're, we're still working on that. Yes. And, and graphics options will allow us to do that. We will be bringing those to you very soon. Yes. So that's all the time we have for today. I hope you all are, are very enlightened now about debugging your frame rate in Unreal. And thank you, Tyler. No problem. I'm Rob Irving, and we'll see you next time.